now the time has come to scrape the saddle. I've used the, just a the block there wood to mount it to the vise. As you can see, it didn't function all that well, but you can see it's a little bit loose, loose a little bit. Uh, however, uh, scraping here, I just make some passes on the inside of um, to the, let's say the, the crest of the dovetail there, because there is a tendency to scrape uh, less there. So you have to really make an effort to do that. Otherwise, you will, of course, tilt the flat towards the outside, do downwards towards, towards. And then we get the chance to train or practice with the, the pull scraping method, with the blade uh, ground a little bit different. The angles are different. As you can see, I use quite a lot of force, but still the let's say the efficiency of each stroke and the, and the speed is uh, quite low. So this is only done so because there was no room because of the protrusion on each side to get down into that pocket sufficiently with push scraping. So uh, this is an alternative technique that uh, comes in handy sometimes, if not always. But of course, I use the biax whenever possible because this is much more efficient. So, uh, just short stroke uh, so that you don't bump into the dovetail too much, and then uh, that's much more cost-effective method than uh, the pull scraping. So I use this whenever I I can. So it starts getting a decent finish, uh, but as we shall see, it's uh, still shy on the inside. Of course, um, I used a sled here to prove each side playing parallel to one another, but um, here is where a king wave will really come in handy. And as I said, uh, when we started testing with the um, uh, with the cross side, the other signs as a template, it soon revealed itself to be. Uh, shy on the inside, so the, the surfaces tip down towards the outside. So then, of course, corrective measure would be or have been to use step scraping, so harder towards the inside. So lesson learned all the time. And as a finishing technique, we polish up uh, the underside of the cross line. In this case, use that as a uh, mark up to the saddle and then poly or rub back and forth to really polish the um, saddle and then we then actually polish off the highest of the high spots as we will see then these reveal themselves uh, vividly and then you can start scraping just those to get the ultra precision flat surface As you can see, in part of the surface here, searching for these uh, shiny spots, you can see them here. And these are then higher than the ones on the inside there. Also uh, distinguished by the fact that they have a sort of a, a crest, a darker side of each spot. So um, they are easily identified really, and these are the highest of the high spots. Now I assembled the two pieces together and then uh, inserted the gib, which is too shallow, so this is now backed up by a two tenths of a millimeter shim. So now from another angle, I assembled uh, again, snugged up the gib, and uh, this is now tight and snug. And um, if you then see, yeah. There's no rock, and then I measured the play afterwards, and then of course revealing the, the blue 
after doing up it all is smooth and nice I had to correct it a little bit to get it that way but anyway so yeah there is no play there either so this is now at this stage okay to proceed then with with the screw and the assembly there and also of course then with testing <laughs>